It looks like the legendary career of Tate Martell is going to be coming to an end as there were reports out there saying that he's retiring from football. Plus, the Big 12 is in talks of splitting into divisions once they expand in a couple years. All of that and more on today's episode of 4th and 10, four college football stories in just around 10 minutes. Now, let's go for it. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are you're a college football fan, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel, so make sure to join the best college football community here on YouTube. Also, if you could drop a like on this video, I would greatly appreciate it as well. It helps the algorithm of the video and helps share with more college football fans. So we're going to start out this video with Tate Martell. Now again, I don't think this is 100% confirmed, but if you go to his Twitter bio, it says Trademark Enterprises, University of Miami alum, so nothing there about currently playing football. This tweet comes from Joe Arrigo, who said, I wanted to give an update on UNLV football quarterback Tate Martell. He is retired from football and focusing on business ventures. He is grateful for Coach Arroyo and UNLV for giving him a chance. I would also keep an eye on what Tate has going on business-wise. It's about to blow up. Now, there were a couple more tweets that Joe followed up with. I've known Tate for a while, and while he has caused some of the reputation he got, especially early on, he is not the same 17 to 18 year old that was on a TV show and popping off on social media. We all were immature as young adults at some point, and to be in his position and having social media at his disposal didn't help him. And again, part of that is on him. I wrote an article about what he has gone through, including battling depression, a year ago prior to him going to UNLV. He asked to walk on to earn his place but had multiple injuries last year that derailed him getting on the field more. He has matured and has reconciled relationships that he felt he did wrong. Tate actually retired from football after the season, but didn't want to be a distraction. He is grateful for Marcus Arroyo and the school for giving him an opportunity and supporting him. He wishes he could have, would have played for him sooner. Tate is a friend, we are close, and he has a great business opportunity that he's been working on for a while. So I think at this point, everybody knows Tate Martell and his incredible football journey. I posted a video, I think a year and a half ago, pretty much going over his entire timeline. So if you want more in-depth analysis on Tate Martell, Martell's entire football career, you guys can go and check out that video. But for those of you that want a brief recap, here's Tate Martell's incredible journey. When he was only 14 years old, he committed to the University of Washington under head coach Steve Sarkeesian. He attended Bishop Gorman High School and went 45-0 as the starting quarterback and was named the Gatorade Football Player of the Year and the USA Today Football Player of the Year. He was one of the top recruits that we've ever seen as essentially every program was sending him an offer. He ultimately decommitted from Washington and ended up committing to Texas A&M in 2015, but he decommitted again and ended up committing to Ohio State state where he enrolled after graduating high school. He was battling for the starting spot at Ohio State, but ultimately lost the job to Dwayne Haskins. He appeared in spurts of games during blowouts and did have three total touchdowns, but never saw a start for Ohio State. When Dwayne Haskins declared for the draft, Justin Fields transferred into Ohio State, and Tate Martell, who was pretty angry about it, decided to leave and enter the transfer portal. He wasn't in there long as he committed to Miami. He battled for the starting quarterback job, but ultimately he lost to Jaron Williams. And in order to try to get on the field, Tate Martell briefly switched to wide receiver. But that didn't last long, and he switched back to quarterback. He ended up playing three games for Miami, but completed only one pass. Then in 2020, De'Ara King transferred to Miami, and Tate Martell knew that he wouldn't win that battle. So he opted out of the season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then, following the end of the season, he re-entered the transfer portal. Tate Martell ultimately transferred back home and committed to UNLV in 2021. But he never really saw much action for the Rebels at all. So Tate Martell's career is officially over. One of the top recruits we've ever seen at the quarterback position played for three different schools and only attempted 35 passes over his entire career. He threw one touchdown pass, which came all the way back in 2018. Over his final three years, Tate Martell only completed three passes and only attempted seven. So best of luck to Tate Martell and whatever his next business venture is. The way this is being hyped up, I'm sure it's going to be something pretty cool 
and hopefully he can build a career from that. But yeah, it's gotta suck for Tate Martell because I think you could easily make the case he's the biggest bust in college football history. Moving on to our next topic, the Big 12 is engaged in plans to split into two seven-team divisions beginning in 2023 amid the realignment. Now, the Big 12 is set to expand before both Texas and Oklahoma leave, so this requires a divisional split. Assuming that BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF join the conference ahead of the 2023-2024 year, the Big 12 is going to be at 14 teams for two seasons. Then the Big 12 would shrink to 12 teams when Oklahoma and Texas leave, and then they would play in six team divisions beginning in 2025. Now again, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but here's a projection of one way the Big 12 could organize its seven team divisions in 2023. Again, these aren't official. This is just something that's been proposed. In the Big 12 North, you would have Cincinnati, BYU, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Then in the Big 12 South, you would have Baylor, Houston, TCU, Texas, Texas Tech, UCF, and West Virginia. So those would be the divisions for a couple of years, and then when Oklahoma and Texas both leave, you simply drop them out, and then you'd have your six team divisions. Again, this isn't 100% how they're gonna look, but this is probably the most accurate pick as to how you can see these divisions turning out in a couple of years. Do you guys remember after Georgia won the national championship, Kirby Smart said there was likely gonna be some property that was damaged uh, while everyone was gonna be celebrating? Well, turns out he was right, and turns out one of his own football players was one of the reasons for it. Now, I'm not exactly certain if I'm going to say the name right. I apologize because he's a long snapper and I don't think I've ever heard his name before, but Georgia long snapper William Mahdi was arrested and is facing criminal charges due to damage and property on the early morning of January 12th. According to police reports, he allegedly destroyed a single pane window of an Athens downtown law office. Mahdi told the police that he was intoxicated after drinking at a bar and he was going to see a friend, but mistakenly, went to the law office. I mean, this guy must have had at least 10 drinks if he thought this law office was his friend's place. The incident came at about 5 a.m. the morning after the team arrived to Athens after their win in Indianapolis. He's a redshirt sophomore walk-on and has been the long snapper the past two seasons for Georgia. According to the article, police were called when a burglar alarm was set off by a broken window. He was detained because the officer thought it was a burglary in progress. He told police that he was walking home and and saw a homeless person who had asked him to help him get warm and that's why he was kicking down the office door. Mahdi was asked about the law office window and said he didn't know about it and he didn't break it. So yeah, luckily it wasn't anything too severe, but again, he had one too many drinks at a local bar and was trying to take down a law office. I mean, of all players on Georgia to get arrested for damaging property, I would think the long snapper would be the last person I would expect to be arrested. We'll wrap up our video with the best games from the college football season. ESPN recently dropped their top 100 games from the past season, and I think the top five is pretty interesting. Coming in at number five was the Big 12 Championship featuring Baylor and Oklahoma State. Now overall, it was a pretty okay game, but I definitely think the final few minutes in this game, especially the final drive, certainly is what put this in the top five. Especially the final play of the game, which featured one of the best defensive stops we've seen in recent memory. Oklahoma State comes in again at number four, as it's their victory over Oklahoma in Bedlam this year. Now again, this was a pretty exciting game, and definitely one of the better ones we've seen between these two teams in recent memory, but I don't know, I think having this game at number four might be just a bit too high, but nonetheless, it was still a very exciting game and a great victory from Oklahoma State. Coming in at number three is Texas A&M's three-point victory over Alabama. Now, this was a pretty exciting back and forth game. I think Alabama was something like a 17-point favorite in this one, and Texas A&M pretty much just had their number all game. Alabama ultimately tied the game late, but Texas A&M kicked a game-winning field goal as time expired to get the victory. Coming in at number two is the Rose Bowl featuring Ohio State and Utah. Now this was a game that truly had it all, easily one of the best Rose Bowls we've seen in recent memory. Jackson Smith and Jigma caught 15 passes for 350 yards with three touchdowns. CJ Stroud also had an amazing game, and Utah, they played a hell of a game as well. I mean, this was a game that was back and forth all four quarters, and the final few minutes was amazing. Ultimately, 
ultimately, Ohio State kicked the game-winning field goal with about 10 seconds left, and that won the game for them. Now, this one might surprise you. The number one game, according to ESPN, was between Ole Miss and Arkansas back when Ole Miss got the one-point victory. Ole Miss won 52-51. to Now, for those of you that watched the game, this was truly a wild finish. Arkansas actually tied the game at 45 with just over a minute remaining, but Ole Miss responded with a 70-yard touchdown pass just 15 seconds later. Then, as time expired, KJ Jefferson threw a touchdown pass to Warren Thompson, and Arkansas trailed by only one point. After a crazy back and forth game, the Hogs decided to go for two, but they fell just short, losing to Ole Miss by one point. Now again, I get this was an exciting game, but I don't know if I would personally call this the best game of the college football season. Whatever you thought the best game from this past season was, let me know in the comment section down below, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to have different games for their best game of the season. So, what are your thoughts on all the topics I discussed today? What are your thoughts on Tate Martell deciding to hang it up? Do you think the Big 12 should have divisions? What are your thoughts on the Georgia long snapper getting arrested? And what are your thoughts on the best games from the past college football season? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't done so yet, now is the perfect time to smash that subscribe button and join the community here on YouTube. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. Oh, and make sure to drop a like on this video as well, as it helps the algorithm and helps share it with more college football fans. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.